It's 1993 and a mysterious illness hits the area known as the Four Corners of the United States. Border residents from New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and Utah begin to fall ill with flu-like symptoms. It ends up being something much worse. The outbreak in Four Corners left 13 people dead, and it was all because of a virus that was transmitted by a wild rodent known as the deer mouse. These mice carried with them a type of hantavirus known as the sin nombre virus. So what is hantavirus? It's a virus carried by wild rodents that can be shed through their droppings, urine, or saliva. You never want to disturb any rodent droppings unless you're familiar on how to clean them up using the wet cleaning method. There is no treatment for HPS or hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. That's why it's important to stop it before it stops you. Mice can be a problem. Today we're gonna to go in this trailer that's been sitting here for quite a few years. It's infested with mice. I'm Ron Ramos, I'm with the San Diego County Vector Control Program. Ron's been dealing with rodents for 19 years. We'll monitor on a day-to-day -day basis uh, different areas of the county. If we're informed of a problem or a disease or an outbreak, then we'll go you know, right to that area and do our testing. He's going to be testing for hantavirus. Before he does any testing, Ron has to set traps. Down goes the trap, in goes the food. Hantavirus has been found as far east as Campo. We found it in Penasquitos, Escondido, Rancho Bernardo, even the Oceanside areas. Hantavirus is a disease transmitted from rodents to humans. Its symptoms are flu-like. Deer mice are the main rodents that carry hantavirus. Deer mice are found in urban fringes, fields, and mountain areas. They rarely inhabit urban areas. These mice will urinate, defecate, even their saliva. It can attach itself to a dust particle, and then these minute particles can become aerosolized. And that's when the problem begins, breathing in the dust. Say you open up this trailer, you haven't let it air it out, you go in there and sweep or you're looking for something, and then you're breathing these minute particles that uh, may contain the hantavirus. Hantavirus pulmonary syndrome, or HPS, can be deadly. So if you know you've been in a location that's been vacant for a while and you start experiencing flu-like symptoms, let your physician know. The traps are set and left overnight. The next day, Ron collects the traps and proceeds to bleed the mice. He'll have the blood samples tested for hantavirus. When we do find hantavirus, we'll post the areas, a press release goes out, We'll notify the property owner and tell him what he can do to correct the problem if there are mice getting inside his property. The samples are tested at the Vector Disease and Diagnostic Lab. It's where experts can tell if mice are actually carrying hantavirus. Mice are not affected by the virus. They carry the virus, they can excrete it out in the urine in high quantities, but they themselves don't get sick. Testing the blood is a 24-hour process. It's first taken for a spin, and then placed in a tray with a test strip. It's gently rocked for an hour, and then the strips are checked to see if the blood carries hantavirus. If it does... Generally, within a week is uh, when you might expect to, to come down with clinical signs. The symptoms in the early phase may include fever, fatigue, and uh, pain or muscle ache of large uh, muscles of the body. 50% of people that have HPS will also have possibly chills headache, dizziness, and abdominal pain. Currently, there is no specific treatment for hantavirus except for supportive care when the symptoms are in the early phase, and that includes uh, treatments such as Tylenol for fever, uh, hydration if people are throwing up or vomiting. Antibiotics are not effective against hantavirus, and there's usually nothing to worry about in San Diego. It's not that prevalent. We test a lot of mice every year. The number that test positive varies from around 5% at a high uh, to much less than that. There's some years where we don't even find it. But if it was found in the county? Well, the concern obviously is the high fatality rate. I mean, if only one person gets it, that's a pretty high risk of them dying. Hantavirus pulmonary syndrome can lead to pneumonia, but it is not contagious and cannot be spread from person to person. If wild rodents end up getting into your sheds, storage units, or any type of confined space, you need to be extra careful. The absolute best thing the public can do for hantavirus prevention is to stop the mice from getting into your houses and outbuildings in the first place. What that means is excluding mice from your home. Okay, this is an opening right here. It's a dryer vent. 
My name is Sean Simmons. I'm a vector control tech for the County of San Diego. Sean's an expert when it comes to keeping unwanted pests out of your home. Today, he's got his teaching hat on. Keep in mind, the County of San Diego does not do mice inspections. Basically, we're just showing you how to keep them out of your house. Sean doesn't want to scare people, but he says you shouldn't take rodent droppings for granted. You cannot tell the difference between a house mouse dropping and a deer mouse dropping. So whenever you come across a dropping, especially if they're dry, you know, you might want to assume uh, there's hantavirus there. Okay. There is an opening right here. Don't want to take any chances, so uh, some expanding foam will work really good right here. He looks over the entire home for any type of opening that might invite rodents in. Okay, I do see another small opening right here. Most holes are really simple to, to repair. I would definitely seal that up. A lot of the holes, as, as we saw around this house, they weren't very big, and they could be sealed up with foam. Or you can easily cut steel wool and stuff yeah, it in holes so rodents don't get in. Simple Start rodent control off. can be done by any homeowner if they're willing to do it. One of the easiest places rodents can get into, your garage. The biggest reason is a garage is really hard to seal up. This gap right here is more than a half inch, so that's plenty enough room for a mouse or a rat to get in. I'm gonna sit this trap uh, right next to the gap right there, but I'm also gonna show you trap placement that's really important. I'm gonna bait it with some peanut butter. I like to sit it here. Some people like to sit it in that little box right there. You want them to get a whiff of that peanut butter. So if you put the bait towards the wall, you'll increase your chances more and it'll get his interest a bit more. Gaps in garage doors aren't the only ones to worry about though. One way to eliminate a, a large gap underneath the door is with weather stripping. Anything soft, they can actually just go right through that or chew through it. So you want a good hard plastic or metal. If you happen to come across rodent droppings, there are steps you can take to avoid becoming exposed. Don't vacuum, sweep, or dust droppings. Air out buildings that have been empty for a long period of time for at least 30 minutes. Use the wet cleaning method to clean up droppings. Get some disinfectant, like a 10% solution of bleach or a full strength disinfectant of your choice. Go ahead and get some gloves on. Spritz down the area with that disinfectant. Let it go to work for a good 15 or 20 minutes so it can do its job. Then bust out the paper towels and start wiping everything up. Put everything in a bag. We, we recommend that make sure that you use bags that seal well, so they're or at least tied off really well. So when they go in the, the garbage, there's no leakage. When you're all cleaned up, you can go ahead and wash your hands with the gloves still on. Remove the gloves and dispose of them in the trash. Then wash your hands one last time. Even though hantavirus may not affect you, it still pays to take precautions when dealing with wild rodents. For more information on hantavirus, visit sdvector.com.